Hey, how's it going all? Just back again with another, um, I call this a comment board sermon. So this is in response to a back and forth that I had with um, End Times Teacher. And just, uh, again, you know, I'm pretty upfront, you know, with my um, audience. And, um, you know, there's a few people that know me, you know, in real life, who I think watch some of my videos. So just to clarify, you know, I'm an open book. You know, again, I have absolutely nothing to lose because... I know for sure I'm not going to be here. You know, I'm 40 now and I am not going to see 41. I know that for a fact. And so, um, you know, I just turned 40 recently. So we're definitely in that time frame. You know, things could change like maybe a month or two plus or minus, but I'm definitely not going to be on this earth, you know, in the body in uh, to see 41. You know, I know that for a fact. And so I think I think a lot of us know that because um, we see what's going on. But just again, to clarify and then maybe give comfort to other people who um, are sort of, you know, have sensed this, I think for a while, especially if you're a flat earther, you should have a sense that the evil is not going to stop. <laughs> it's not like, oh, just kidding. You know, we're going to come clean now and all that. But um, yeah, end times teachers like, um, you know, something, I uh, can't remember even what the topic was, but oh, yeah, he's like, Christ will not return in 2021. And then he cites um, a verse in Matthew. And he's like, uh, when G uh, January 1st comes, remember ETT told y'all. So so I'm like, okay. I'm like, if he does, you will not be taken based on your statement. Do you agree? And he said, yeah, he agrees. So that's good. And so this, again, one of the few people I can interact with because, you know, he's definitely an actor. I think we all know that. But, uh, you know, he's a bit more reasonable, you know, than, you know, the average GMS member. And certainly like the elders quote-unquote elders of these masonic groups but um he's like agreed if he don't return by january 1st are you a false teacher and i say yes sir and so i want to clarify that statement you know and so again i want people to understand that i'm not worried or or um going to feel embarrassed you know in, in when i do that live stream at the end of this year i'm not you know at all because uh, if what i teach doesn't come true then what I was told was not divine. And so it must have just been something that I guess I figured out, okay? But I want people to know, I just know from my own um, brain what I have figured out and what God has definitely planted in my mind. Certain things when you read the Gospels, you know, and then you read them enough, you really start to get a sense of, you know, Christ and his character. And then you could like try and apply those in your life. That's more along the lines of, you know, a sermon that, you know, I could do and, and was doing, you know, prior to January 1st, 2020, that would be all the stuff that I've learned, you know, throughout the years in, you know, 501c3 church. And then, you know, re reading the Bible more, you know, during the time of the flat earth, that's quote me, you know, again, it's obviously, hopefully if it's true, God is speaking through me, but it's not like prophetic in nature, you know, and all that. It was nothing, anything that was unlocked, you know, or anything like that. But from that day, January 1st, 2020, going forward, for me, very much was unlocked, you know, certain secrets. And so that I would not have figured out ever on my own. I would never have thought that the two men in Acts 1, 10 to 11 are the two witnesses. I could never have thought that. And then with that truth, then the whole Bible makes sense now. Like all the other verses get, you know, they the order and the sequence now, it's like, whoa, okay. That's how, you know, the elect are taken away prior to wrath. And then we know who's administering the wrath. And then we know that Revelation 16 is going to happen after that and Revelation 11. And then it all makes sense. All the mysterious chapters in Revelation are no longer mysterious because those two chapters, Revelation 11 and 16, are very, very important. And then I was told, I wouldn't even say indirectly, that they haven't happened yet, you know, but they're going to happen soon. And then I would assume that I was told that because it involves me. And so that's um, stuff that you know, I, I pieced together, you know, that how much it wouldn't, how it would involve me now, you know, now that I'm, you know, um, running out of money and stuff. So that's why I'm putting these um, videos out as a heads up, up in the sky. Don't focus on my channel, focus on the sky, you know, in Christ's second coming, because I just know for a fact that this will never happen in, in, again in the future. There will never be a person anywhere, you know, whether on YouTube or not, who will have this quote secrets and then be able to prove it, you know, many, many times over 
and then have the mark of the beast out, which is necessary for Christ to, to return because the first plague in Revelation 16 involves the mark of the beast being out. So he has to return in a time period where it's out, you know, to at least, you know, like some, some significant portion of the earth. So that will never happen again. Okay. No one's going to get resealed <laughs> like a year or two down the road. And then the microchip will be the mark of the beast. You know, if the microchip is the mark of the beast, then the, the Bible is not true, you know? And so that's why I, I would just say that we're, you know, I'm comfortable, you know, with my position and I'm not embarrassed or I'm not going to be embarrassed if people join that live stream and say whatever they want, because I'd be inclined to say that the Bible is not true. You know, if Christ doesn't return when I'm quote in the body. And so if this narrative goes out, you know, and then it goes unchecked and it's not the mark of the beast or anything like that, then the Bible's not true because the Bible says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. But wait a minute, the earth got away, quote, got away with the narrative worldwide. And it was just like any other, you know, um, you know, influenza or polio. It was just another one of those. Okay. Like all the other ones in the past, it was not that, you know, um, Revelation 13, and so, well, how do we know that the next, if the next one's evil, it's like, well, does God, how many different tries does God need to get it right, so to speak? And so that's where I know that we have to be living in those times. And then the fact that I was sealed on January 1st, 2020 is further evidence of that. But for me personally, that's, that's important, you know, and then I wouldn't even make that statement knowing how, you know, money I have left if the mark of the beast wasn't out or a candidate for the mark of the beast wasn't out. So that's why, again, why I'm, I'm very, very comfortable. And so, yeah, I would, I would be a false teacher if, um, you know, if I'm not here, you know, um, you know, Christ returns, you know, or something like that, or, um, yeah, Christ doesn't return, you know, while I'm not still in the body. So yeah, for sure. But then, you know, if that doesn't happen, I want people to know my, my thought then is not that, there's another inter interpretation that's better or something like that, or there's some other group that's sealed or are going to be sealed, I would say the Bible's not true. And so, and then if the Bible's not true, then I was just hoodwinked twice. Okay, the first time in the 501c3 church, you know, falling in love with the fact that Christ was humble, and I thought that that was amazing. You know, that was the first major thing that stood out to me that, wow, God has actually exists, and then he could potentially be humble. That was the narrative that really, really kept me interested you know, in Christianity, 501c3 version of it. And then now because of the flat earth. And so I would be duped twice. And so I, I would feel like I deserve to, to not be here and stuff. So, um, and then obviously this narrative is, is the icing on the cake that I, I don't want to be here anyway, whether the Bible made statements about whether we should take a part in it or not. So um, even prior to this narrative, I was already being passed around <laughs> company to company every six months. They were like, go try somewhere else. And then you can't do that for too often because then people will keep asking, why did you leave after six months or a year and all that? My, the longest that I've stayed at a company was like a year or two at most. And like, that was extreme. Around a six months or a year is pretty much, I've done that like many, many times. And then they're like, you're, you know, then they know that you're just a person who's, you know, just has no, staying power you know and then you're not um you don't play along they know that and then they they'll ask and then they'll get worried because then they'll hire you and they know that you're going to leave and potentially cause problems and then i'm a troublemaker you know and i know that i am and i'm not going to stop in the corporate world i am a troublemaker because if i see anything that's you know unjust or whatever i mean if i can't just play along okay that's just the way that i was made i didn't even design that myself i'm glad that i was designed that way that would be one of the few righteous qualities that I possess. Another one is that I feel like I genuinely enjoy sharing information. Okay. I don't, uh, I don't know. I just have that sort of spirit, you know, of tutoring and mentoring and all that, which I've done throughout my life. And so that as well. So there are those things that I'll never, that's just who I am. You know, I, I enjoy collaboration, you know, and like uh, innovation and that kind of thing. And the corporate world's not about that. It's about like job security and just politics and being an actor, basically. And so that's, I know that now. And so I'm not going to act and I don't even know how to. And so, you know, uh, that's, that's very, very clear. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's a perfect um, 
time period and then time limit for me as well. And so it's not that, you know, if I, if I quote unquote cross over on my own that, uh, oh, that means that, oh, may, maybe end times teacher was right, or, or maybe Ken Hovind was right, or maybe Pastor Anderson was right. I know those people they're teaching are so bad and it's like obviously bad, you know, and then wrong. And so that's, again, I'm very, very comfortable, you know, and I say that I, I'm expecting Christ to return, you know, when I'm in the body. And so, you know, I have um, enough, again, if the prices stay the same, you know, for, for this year, you know, with, um, and then um, near the end of this year, I'm going to sell my car. And then, you know, I have a decent car that, again, unless something happens to it um, or me, and then um, whatever that I get from that, I, I'm not going to be on YouTube, you know, for whatever January, February, March, something like that, whatever amount that I could squeeze from that. I'm just basically <laughs> going to be playing golf like every day and that's it, you know. And so I'm, you know, I'm not going to be like putting lessons and all that because the, I wouldn't have any cold lessons at that point. It would be pretty dark, you know, and then honestly, I don't, it's not for everybody, you know, because like some people like it here, you know, and then they don't see that short of a time frame and then that that's fine you know and so i'm not i don't even enjoy raining on people's parade like if you genuinely um don't want christ to return anytime soon and that's that's a thought that you know you just don't want and then you're going to find verses to, to support that which is what people like end times teacher do i find all the verses that obviously the, the bible teaches but um that makes it very very clear that he will return you know very very soon and that's comforting, you know, and encouraging. But um, yeah, if that's not for you, then even the next few months, I, I wouldn't stay here. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not changing my tune and I'm not gonna start speaking positively or, oh, you know what? Like may maybe there is an option for me and like get into gardening. No, I'm not doing anything, okay? I'm not supporting a system at all. I'm not lifting a single finger to support a system that has done this much evil to my brain. No, I'm sorry. Like. Um, I'm not that stupid. Okay, I've been a part of it and played dumb for long enough. I'm not playing dumb anymore. Okay, I'll wait uh, again a few months to see if Christ returns and then that's it. And then if that doesn't happen in that time frame, then I'm certainly not of the elect. And then my teaching is questionable. Okay, again, you can't argue with the fact that that pattern is everywhere. And so it's not about me anymore. That's what the Bible says. And so I don't feel any like pressure or worry. Oh man, like it's it's already like almost October. It's <laughs> like, I don't care. Like uh, if if somebody were to like, if my bank account would magically wake up tomorrow and it'll be zero, I wouldn't worry. Like, oh man, well now, <laughs> now it's like, oh man, God doesn't love me. I'll be like, well then if I am one of them, then God will return. And then that's it, you know, before anything happens to me. And it just because I have um, enough money to get through this year, something could still happen to me. You know, I could hit by lightning or <laughs> like anything can happen to us all the time and so i don't even take comfort in that m amount of money and so i just want people to know that i'm this is i really believe <laughs> believe this okay if, if you and the only reason the main reason that i believe this is that what i teach i did not come up with you know i'm arrogant enough to take credit for things that i'm you know i've done and I, i'm very quick to take credit you know for things that i do like golf i take full credit i believe that i you know made myself a quote-unquote scratch golfer but obviously God ultimately gives us all the abilities and then, you know, the time and all that to be able to do that. But I don't give like God credit. <laughs> like I, maybe yeah, I should ultimately, but I'm like, no, I'm, I'm a scratch golfer. Me, you know, I did that and that kind of thing. And so, you know, cause that's pretty much all I do unless, unless I'm like doing these videos. So, but on that, in that topic, in that arena, I, I know I didn't come up with that. And so the, now I'm just waiting and seeing, you know, and I'm thankful that, I don't have 50,000 or 100,000 or a million dollars in the bank account because then I wouldn't have any urgency or I wouldn't have any um, way of knowing when those things will come true. And I wouldn't look forward to it as much as I am now because every day I'm looking forward to it, okay? Every minute of every day, I have that expectation that it could very well happen. And so, you know, just know that if you're a person like End Times Teacher who says that it's not going to happen, it doesn't want it to happen ultimately to fulfill whatever you're teaching or you're thinking in your life, then you're definitely not going to be taken away. And so my channel will only make sense to people who want to and are preparing to be taken away, you know, this year. And so um, one thing I want people to just, I was going to do a separate lesson, but I can just cover it here. 
I'm going to post a picture. I'll use it as the thumbnail. Check out the picture of the UN General Assembly. Okay, the actual room. I actually lived near this building when I lived in New York, but it would have been cool to actually go inside. But it literally looks like the roof looks like a UFO. Okay, and then you see a beam. Then you see all these like chairs. I would not be surprised if the number of chairs is a multiple or something of 144, but it's essentially a depiction of salvation. It's not funny, but you know, again, I'll post the link to those images below. Just do a Google search for the UN General Assembly room. And then you'll literally see that the roof is constructed like a, like a saucer, like a UFO, a cloud. And then you'll see a beam and then you'll see again, chair. So it's, it's like, I mean, it's very clear that that symbolism is everywhere. You know, that these so-called UFOs are the clouds or the chariots of salvation. And that thought could not even enter our mind unless God wanted to prepare us for that event. And so no one's going to teach that next generation or even tomorrow. Okay. Except people who know that those are the vehicles of God's salvation. And that's us. That's this generation. This generation shall not pass till they see these things. So, you know, I just say this in a friendly way. Okay. I'm not worried, you know, that I made that thumbnail as a, as a joke, you know, and it, I would be a clown because that means that the Bible is not true. That's the, that's the stance that I'm going to be taking on that day. You know, at the end of this year, I'm not going to be like, oh man, I should have taught this or you know, man, okay, like, I just was too anxious or whatever. No, I'm like, the Bible's not true, you know, because all the interpretations that I've looked are stupid. Like, they're really stupid, not just slightly stupid. And the people are stupid, okay? And they're obviously not from God's right-hand side. And so that's why I know that it's either what I teach or it's not true. And so then, those few months that I'd be playing golf based on whatever I can get from my car, uh, I'm not going to be like regretting teaching or something like that. Like, oh, I'm not going to be searching for, oh, okay, maybe I'll take this other person. More. I'm still going to laugh at all you people, okay, who teach the Bible and mock the Bible and stuff. Like, I still think you're stupid. You're going to be stupid for a different reason, though, you know, and that kind of thing. But um, at that point, I would be like, well, you're teaching a book that's like you don't even understand, okay? And then it's clearly not coming true. And so, and you don't even know what you you claim to be a prophet or people who are prophesying, but they're not even stating anything clearly like I am. I state exactly what's going to happen. You know, the only thing I don't know is the day that Christ returns. But then from that point forward, there's 1,335 days. You can set your watch to it. And then it's, it's told exactly what's going to happen for the first 1260, the 90, and then the 45. And so that's a real prophet. That's a real prophecy. That's a real testimony, according to the Bible, Revelation 19.10. And no one else is saying that. And no one else later is going to be like, oh, you know what? Like, I, I, I got it now. Okay, I'll, I'll do this. I was sealed and then I'm going to go and share that or something that makes more sense than that. It's impossible. Because, again, I find that sequence everywhere. And so that's why I'm genuinely excited. And I say this, like, not to be arrogant, but I would really, if you're serious about the Bible, don't look for Christ to return next year or the year after, the year after, the year after. It has to be during a time when a person states that they're sealed and then they can prove it, okay? And so there's no amount of money that will change whether I'm God's elect or not. So if I had a lot more money or a lot less, that doesn't change a single thing. I either am or I'm not. And so I put myself as a candidate for one of the 144,000 in Revelation 7. And so I don't even take comfort in the, the few thousands of dollars that will get me through this year, um, that's that doesn't mean anything, you know, at all. It's not like, oh man, if I just had another year or another two years, then I'll really be able to make sure that I am. It's like, no, it's like, if I am, it's going to happen. And so you, everyone listening to this video, you have to decide, are we listening to somebody who's of the 144,000? And if you say yes, then you can buckle up because it's going to happen. There's no doubt in my mind that group that was sealed, whatever group you, that is, is not going to die. OK, and they're not the type who's going to beg because the Bible says it's better to die than to beg. And they're not the type of, who's going to go into a system and break one of God's laws. They're not, like, why would they? They're like, I've been sealed. I know God exists and God will prove it to them in a special way, of course, and a consistent way, you know, amongst the group. But ultimately, they're going to know that they, that they're God's chosen. And so just wait you know he's coming and so the none of them will pass away no matter what anybody else says and so that's their fate 
And that, that narrative is in the Bible everywhere. That's their reward and God chose them. It's not that they did anything and they didn't even set the day when that's going to happen. They don't decide what's in their bank account or anything like that, okay? What they do decide though is that group follows Christ wherever he goes. And so they know that Christ is not here. And so, you know, either Christ comes and saves them or they go to him. There's, there's no other option. And they're not, they're not the type to like dilly dally. Okay, I'll give God a God hundred years and then I'll just hang around here in hell and all that kind of stuff. They're going to know that they're in hell because that's why they would need salvation. No one, none of them are going to be taken away and be like, oh, wait a minute. Like, uh, let me try and reach all this stuff. And like, oh man, why are you taking me away? Uh, they're going to be desperately looking to get out of here because they know that even the truth community are Satanists. Okay. And so that's their mindset. And so it's, it's a desperate you know, rescue operation, okay, for that group. And not a single one of them will die. And so it doesn't matter what other people say, now my time teacher saying some of them will because he doesn't know what's going on, okay? And so that's why I'm very, very comfortable, you know, where, where I sit and just, um, you know, you can believe that, you know, if, if that's, um, you know, based on what you know about my channel and then maybe what God has told you, but, or if that's not the case, then you have to be the elect yourself or you have to go find somebody who el else who's the elect. Okay, and then if you do find somebody who's a candidate, put them, you know, let me know. Okay, I'll go and listen to them. It's not Rob Skiba, okay? Like, don't pick a, a freaking government shill as a candidate. That shows me that you're not mentally well, okay? No, it's not Rob Skiba as part of the 144,000. Are you kidding me? Next, you're going to say Mark Sargent or Arwin. Okay, are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. The person has to be able to prove it, okay? They're going to teach something and they're gonna tell you very specifically what happened and the date that it happened. And then it's gonna be very clear that we're dealing with somebody on God's right hand side. They're not, they're, the Bible says they have no guile in their mouth. So they're not gonna teach mystery Babylon is like the, the Vatican or China or some, they're not gonna make up any stupid thing, okay? We know that they all will know that mystery Babylon is America because the, the salvation event is gonna be headquartered in America, modern day Egypt. And so, no, they're not going to be confused about where they are. Okay, no. And they're not going to be teaching the ball earth. Okay, they may not be aware that there's a debate because some of them are blind and lame. And so they can't see. And so they're not going to be quote unquote Bible scholars, but they're not going to be pushing lies and be like fervent about it. Okay, they, they will not, none of them. Okay, they have no incentive to. Okay, you tell them in the Bible that this is what it says. They're going to be like, oh, I believe that. They don't even they don't even need to hear about the debate or what you know the the flat earth debate or anything they'll be like oh okay bible says the earth doesn't move guess what the earth doesn't move okay that's their mindset oh the bible says there's going to be two witnesses i know who those people are okay it's not these demons that are out here because they they have god's spirit they're, they're they follow the lamb whithersoever he goes so they know christ's spirit and who christ hangs around because they're the ones that christ hang around and so they know who uh, the two witnesses are okay and like, they're gonna be able to tell who the two witnesses are not, okay, once they hear that person speak. And so that's their, that's their attitude, you know, and then their spirituality. And so, the, uh, you know, that's the times that we live in now. And so it's amazing. I don't know what else to say. Like, it's very, it's personally for me, I'm gonna know whether the Bible is true or not within the next few months. Can you imagine that? I could not have imagined being able to say that with 100% confidence in my life, that there will be no ambiguity for me, January 1st, 2024. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna disassociate from the, from the Bible, you know? And I'm not gonna speak out against it because I leave open, you know, the possibility that Christ will return in 2022. But, um, you know, it's, I'd be, I'd be very, I'd be surprised if that's the case. Then I would say that the elect were sealed, but they're just off YouTube. And which is also very possible, okay, that they were just sealed, but, you know, it's not a public thing where, oh, okay, well then, oh, I went to their channel and then, you know, that's one of them who's teaching properly because we don't, I don't see that anywhere. And so if there were other people teaching properly, then I'll be like, well, okay, that, that is probably the, the elect. And then I'd ask them like, hey, how long are you planning to stay here? And then they would say, the right answer is it's a day by day thing because then they would have been sealed and they would tell me the date, okay? I haven't heard that and I will never hear that. The things you people share are just nonsense. <laughs> like it's so dumb. And so um, I, I don't care if that offends you. If what I teach 
was stupid, then I would call it stupid, but it's not because it's consistent with the whole Bible. Okay. And so that's, again, it's not anything that I asked for because I was, I must've been told that because I would not have figured out what I teach on my own. It's impossible. Now I see things in the Bible patterns and then uh, structure that it has to be divine because I did not see that prior. So again, it's not a decision that I have to make because I've made my decision, you know, and it's a lot, a lot of them have been made for me. And so, and I'm fine with it. Cause like, I mean, I wouldn't change it for, for anything because they're just obvious. And I would have made a lot of them even without the Bible even existing. So you have to make a decision. Everybody listening, you have to decide about the 104. First of all, is there 144,000? Somebody have to decide that because if they're not, then the Bible's not true because that group is sealed in the last days. And so if you don't think that they exist, then there are no Israelites, I guess, because that's the chosen Israelites. And then there is no kingdom because they're running the kingdom. And then there is no God because he would never forget his people. Okay. And he certainly wouldn't leave them hanging in lies because the Bible says, if it were so possible to deceive the very elect, then I'm proof that it's not possible. Okay. And so you have some decisions to make. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.